This screencast includes worked problems from the release 2014 math multiple choice. Uh, this is the second half. I divided this into two uh, separate presentations in order to make it manageable. Uh, part two has a PDF that accompanies it so that students can work it out on their own. And it also includes an interactive quiz where you can check your answers. Uh, on my site, homeworkhelp5.com, I'll include links along with uh, these video posts. Well, let's look at the first one. And again, reading carefully is key. These are as much reading tests as they are math tests. Which expression means the same as the phrase below? Subtract 3 from the product of 8 and 5. Whenever I see an ex uh, a phrase like the product of, I like to put my parentheses around that. The product tells us what operation it tells us to multiply. Remember, if we're look, if it asks for the sum, we're adding the difference. We're subtracting the product. We're multiplying, and the quotient means we're dividing. So I'm going to start with that. I have eight times five. I'll put that in parentheses. Now I want to subtract three from that. So I have to find my product of eight times five. Then I have to take three away from that or subtract three. So we have our expression here. If we look at our choices, we can see that we have the product of 8 and 5, 5 and 8. Well, it doesn't matter what the order is, right, because of the commutative property. So I could just as easily write this as 5 times 8 minus 3. But we see that this adds 3. We're not subtracting 3. So this guy's out. If we look at the next one, again, we use that commutative property, right? And I changed the product of 8 and 5 to the product of 5 and 8. We can do that. So this matches. We know that's the correct answer, but I'm going to continue on and look at the other choices. This one is quite different. I don't have the product of 5 and 8 or 8 and 5, right? I find the difference. So this one would be the difference of 8 and 3 multiplied by 5, or 5 times the difference of 8 and 3. That's not the same. And we have D, 5 times the sum of 8 and 3. Again, that's not the same. So a little bit tricky because we had to use the commutative property, but not all that difficult. Okay, this one. Jim gave the description of a figure. It is a quadrilateral. All sides are equal in length. There are two equal obtuse angles and two equal acute angles. Well, let's go down the line. Let's look at the first part here, quadrilateral. Okay, our, which ones are quadrilaterals? Well, a rectangle is a quadrilateral, so we're good with that. A rhombus is another quadrilateral. Again, quadrilateral means four sides, quad for four, lateral lines or sides. A square is another quadrilateral. A pentagon, penta means five, and this means fig, five sided figure. That one's out. So because uh, we need a quadrilateral, we're left with rectangle, rhombus, and square. Let's look at the next one. All sides are equal length. Well, A, rectangles. The sides of a rectangle are not necessarily of equal length, but they can be, okay, because, for example, a square is still a, a rectangle, and it's still a quadrilateral. So we have to look at a hierarchy here. So it could be a rectangle. A rhombus, yes, rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides. So, yes, it could be that. And a square, a square is a rectangle with four equal sides. Just kind of discussing things here, uh, definitions. We have a uh, trapezoid. 
a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. We have a parallelogram which has two pair of parallel sides. If we go on, we have a rectangle. I'm going to abbreviate that. Is a parallelogram. with right angles, four right angles. I'll make an abbreviation there. A square equals a square equals a rectangle, abbreviate, with equal or I could say congruent sides. And we kind of have a branch off here a rhombus is a parallelogram with equal sides. Okay, just uh, kind of a divergence here, but uh, just basic definitions of our quadrilaterals. Well, let's go on. There are two equal obtuse angles and two equal acute angles. Well, if we look at our definitions of a rectangle, we don't have any uh, obtuse or acute angles. All my angles are right angles. And squares are rectangles, so they have four right angles, once again, with equal sides. So when we get to this final one here, that's where uh, we narrow it down. So it can't be a rectangle. It can't be a square. It must be a rhombus. And one thing about parallelograms and rhombuses is they both have, unless they're squares or rectangles, they have a pair of equal, uh, opposite equal obtuse and acute angles. Again, unless they're also rectangles or squares. Again, if I look at these, okay, those two angles are, off, are equal and these two angles are equal. And you can clearly see that we have a pair of acute, a pair of obtuse, a pair of acute, a pair of obtuse. Which expression is equivalent to 100,000? Well, all we have to do here is go through these and think about what exponents are because, uh, for example, uh, 10 to the first equals 10, 10 to the second equals 10 times 10. So we multiply that and again I can go 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10. And the solutions to this are 10 and that's 100 and this one equals 1000. So let's go right down the line now that we've discussed what uh, uh, exponents are. And simply put, it's the number of times we multiply the base unit, in this case 10. So 10 to the first is just 10. 10 to the second is 10 times 10. There's two 10 factors. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10. We have three factors of 10. So to extend that, we have four factors of 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And we can go and uh, simplify that. Now I could do it this way, 100 times 100 and 100 hundreds is 10,000. You'll notice that if I count my factors of 10, I can also count my zeros here. So if I have 10 to the fourth, I have t four factors of 10, and note I have four zeros. Now think about that right there. So we have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And I have how many zeros? Well, let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five. So I will put five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Put in my comma. Ooh, we have a match here. And again, if we simply counted my five zeros, we could see it corresponds with that. So there's our answer. 
And of course, if I go 10 to the 6, I'm going to have 10 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, making it a million. 10 to the 7th. Put in my commas. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One too many. A comma and a comma, that's 10 million. So again, I showed you basically how exponents are formed, what they mean, and some easy ways to get the correct answer. Lincoln has two books in his backpack. One book has a mass of 3 pounds 7 ounces, and the other book has a mass of 2 pounds 10 ounces. What is the total mass in ounces of the book? Well, there's a few ways we could approach this. I could change uh, my pounds in my 3 pounds 10 ounces, 7 ounces. I could change the 3 pounds to ounces and add them up. Or I could add my pounds and change them to ounces, then add in my ounces. I'm going to do it that way. So I have 3, oh, three pounds... 7 ounces. I'm going to add my 2 pounds and my 10 ounces. And I get 5 pounds, 17 ounces. I'm going to leave those ounces right there, but I'm going to look at these 5 pounds. We need to know the conversion factor. Once again, there's no conversion factor between ounces and pounds on our chart, but we know that 1 pound equals 16 ounces. So I have 5 times 1 pound equals 5. What's the same as 1 pound? It's 16 ounces. And 5 times 16 is 80 ounces. So 5 pounds equals 80 ounces. Now I'll take my 80 ounces, add my 17 ounces, and I get 97 ounces. Again, we could have done this otherwise. I could have converted, uh, I'll do it in red. We had 3 pounds, 7 ounces. And I'm going to convert that 3 pounds. So 3 times 1 pound equals 3 times 16 ounces equals 48 ounces. 48 plus 7 equals 55 ounces. And I could have taken my other 2 pounds, and 2 times 16 is 32, plus my 10 ounces, and I end up with 42. I could have found the sum of 55 and 42, and I'd get 97. Either way, uh, I just wanted to show both approaches, in case you prefer one over the other. The answer is 97 ounces. All right. A box contains 512 grams of cereal. One serving of cereal is 56 grams. How many servings does the box contain? Well, I know that one serving equals 56 grams. So I want to find out how many 56s there are in that box, or how many 56s in 512. Doing a quick tape diagram, my hole is 512. And I want to know how many 56s do I have? So I have equal parts of 56. We know the hole, we know the size of the part, it's 56 grams. We need to find out how many. That means we divide 512 divided by 56. Hmm, I'm a little puzzled here. How many times? Well, I am going to use the multiple choice to help me. Notice that all of these numbers have 9 as a whole, so I'm going to guess 9 times 56. And note that all my answers give uh, have uh, fractions in them. We have mixed numbers, so I'm not going to use a decimal. I'm going to find my remainder and turn it into a fraction. So again, 56 times 9, take advantage of that multiple choice. 6 times 9 
is 54. Regroup. 9 times 5 is 45 plus 5 is 50. So I have 504. Record my 9. Subtract my 504. And I get 8. Now that's my remainder. That's my numerator. My denominator is my divisor. So I have 9 and 856. I see that right there. Now your instinct might be to simplify that fraction. And we could uh, divide both the numerator and the denominator by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. And 56 divided by 8 is 7. Make that look like a 7. Um, either answer is correct. And we need to be prepared to find either form of these answers, whether simplified or not, in the multiple choice. As you can see, it's not given as a simplified answer here, but you need to be flexible in your thinking because sometimes they simplify and sometimes they don't. Lori and Maria bought juice to make fruit punch. Maria bought five bottles of juice, each containing 750 milliliters. Lori bought four liters of juice Based on this information, which statement is true? Read carefully. Let's uh, first let's look at the answers here. We notice that the answers are given in liters, and we see that Maria's uh, has milliliters here. So we need to do some conversion here, and we might as well change everything to liters because Lori has liters, and all the answers are in liters. So let's start with Maria. She has five bottles of juice. We don't know the whole. But we know that she has five bottles. And each bottle is 750 milliliters. All right, writing a little small there, but I think you can make that out. Now, Let's do a conversion here. We could do it before, we could do it after, but I'm going to do it right now. So I have 750 times 1 milliliter. Now 1 milliliter, what's the conversion? Well, 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter. So a milliliter is smaller. So now I have 750 times 1 thousandth of a liter. That becomes 70, 750 over 1,000 equals 750 thousandths, or I could also say 75 hundredths of a liter. So what does this mean I do here? I'm going to take a look. I'm going to take that 750 milliliters, or 75 hundredths of a liter, and multiply it times 4. Okay, so or times 5, rather. We'll multiply. Again, we're multiplying a decimal times a whole number. We're going to ignore the decimal for now and place the decimal when we're done. 5 times 5 is 25. Regroup the 2. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37. Okay, now what do we do? Well, I look at my first factor. I have two decimal places. My second factor, I have none. We place the decimal right there, and we're going to move it over two places. And my final answer is 3 and 75 hundredths of a liter. Now let's look at Lori. Well, she bought 4 liters of juice. That's pretty straightforward. So I have Lori equals 4 liters, and I have Maria equals 3 and 75 hundredths of a liter. Going through the choices... Lori bought 25 hundredths liters more than Maria. Well, how do I find out my comparison here? Well, I can take my Lori, and I want to subtract my Maria. Now, here we are subtracting decimals, so we need to line them up. I have no decimal in 4, so I'm going to put 1 in, 4. And I'll line up my decimal, 3 and 75 hundredths. I'll put in zeros here. Now, 
somebody might be tempted to just put the 5 down here in the 7, but we know it doesn't work that way. So I'm going to regroup, and I do it this way. 1 less than 40 is 39, and this becomes 10. You could also uh, regroup uh, step by step. I taught my class to do it this way. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. We line up those decimals. So my decimal belongs right here, and 3 minus 3 is 0. And indeed, there is our answer. Uh, we could go through the rest of the choices here. I'm not exactly sure what people are doing. They might be multiplying some of these numbers, uh, or they uh, may not have made the correct conversions. But there you go. Again, this is a great review because uh, we need to pay attention to uh, what we do when we multiply a decimal and what we do when we add or subtract a decimal. Uh, we need to make sure that we are lining things up uh, when we add and subtract. And we need to just place the decimal in the final product when we multiply. Which decimal represents the location of point X on the number line? If I look at this, I see that I have 50 hundredths and sixty hundredths and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten increments in between so I can simply label this this would be fifty one hundredths uh, fifty two hundredths fifty three hundredths fifty four hundredths fifty five hundredths Make sure we're right, 56 hundredths. I'm being very cautious here, and I'm trying to teach my students to be equally cautious. 58 hundredths, and I have 59 hundredths. Okay, that works. And what do we have here? It's right here. Now, notice that this is written as a fraction, and our answers are in decimals. Well, if I simply say 55 hundredths, again, I could look at my little chart here, my ones, my tenths, my hundredths. I have 55 hundredths. I have that. So our answer is 55 hundredths as a decimal. Clark made a model of his house. His house is 30 and one half feet long. The dimensions of the model were 1 25th the dimensions of Clark's actual home. What is the length in feet of the model? Well, I need 1 25th, 1 25th of 30 and 1 half. And that implies that we multiply. Now we have... Uh, Multiplication of fractions, but one of these is a mixed number. We have two choices. We can either convert the mixed number into an improper fraction, or we can use the area model. I'll do it both ways. So 1 25th times 30 and 1 half equals 1 25th times, well, 30 times 2 is 60 plus 1 is 61, and I have halves. All right, so let's continue. I multiply. 1 times 61 is 61, and 25 times 2 is 50. We'll take uh, that and change it into a mixed number. We're going to divide the numerator, 61, by the denominator, 50. It goes in once. Subtract 61 minus 50, I get 11, 1 and 11 fiftieths. We can see that we have the answer right there. Demonstrating the area model, I have 1 25th. Decompose my 30 into 30 plus 1 half. 30 times 1 25th is 30 twenty fifths which equals 1 and 5 25ths. And 1 half times 1 25th is 1 50th. 
Okay, so we find the sum, 1 and 5 twenty-fifths plus 1 fiftieth. We're going to have to change my twenty-fifths to fiftieths. We do that by multiplying by 2. That equals 1 and 10 twenty or 10 fiftieths rather plus 1 fiftieth equals 1 and 11 fiftieths. Again, we get the same answer in both cases. It won't hurt if you have time to actually do the problem out in two different ways to assure you have the correct answer if you have the time. Deb has a board that measures 5 feet in length. How many 1 fourth foot pieces can Deb cut from the board? I'm going to create an area model here. And even if you don't know what to do, you can draw a nice picture and get the answer. We know that the hole is 5 feet. Now we're going to uh, break this into equal parts, each 1 foot. Okay, now we're going to divide each foot into four equal pieces. And if I didn't have multiple colors, I might use dotted lines there. All right, well, how many pieces do we have? Each one of these pieces is uh, one-fourth of a foot, right? We take a foot and break it into four parts. We do this five times. Count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so we can do it that way. We can also do the algorithm. 5 divided by 1 fourth. And we know that that is the same as 5 times 4, and that is 20. So again, drawing diagrams is a great way to check. It's also a great way to make sure that you're doing the proper algorithm. The answer is 20. Okay, this one uh, trips kids up, but if you take the time and uh, break things down, it's not so hard. Uh, the, the trick is getting you to break things down and to be careful not assuming you have the answer. In which number does the 5 represent the val a value 10 times the value represented by the 5 in three, uh, 35,187. Let's uh, do a place value chart. And I'd encourage you to do the same. All right, so we have our ones, our tens, our hundreds, our thousands, our ten thousands. And we have our hundred thousands. That represents all our places there. That's a zero, not a six. Let's place the numbers in the chart of the original number. I have three in the ten thousands place. I have five in the thousands place. I have one in the hundreds place, eight in the tens place, and seven in the ones place. Now I want a pl uh, value uh, for five that's ten times the amount. Remember, when we go to ten times the amount, we're going to shift it to the next place over. So if we have something 10 times the amount of 5 in the thousands, thousands place, I'm going to look for 5 in the 10 thousands place. So let's uh, go through our choices. We're going to look at our 10 thousands places. There's that, 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 and that. Uh, A, I have 1 in the 10 thousands place. No. In B, I have 4. No. C, I have 2. The 5 is in the same place, so it has the same value. So, no, that's not going to do it. But here, in D, I have 5 in the ten thousandths place. That's where we need to be. Again, take your time. Break things down. Think it out. Make a chart. No big deal. Michelle is 52 inches tall. Her father is 6 feet 3 inches tall. Exactly how many inches taller is Michelle's father than Michelle? Well, things are fairly uh, simple here, but the one complication is we want the answer in inches. We have Michelle's measurement in inches, but we have Dad's uh, measurement in feet and inches. So we're going to have to take that and make a conversion. So he has uh, father is 6 feet plus 3 inches. Okay, well, that equals 6 times 
one foot plus three inches. And six times one foot, well, how many inches are equal to a foot? You should know that. Again, no chart, not anymore. One foot is 12 inches plus three inches. Now we have 72 inches plus three inches equals 75 inches. So we know that the father is 75 inches. We know that Michelle is 52 inches. We want to find out how much taller he is. So we simply take the whole 75 inches, subtract Michelle's 52 inches, and we get 23. What is the value of two-fifths and three-sevenths? Now, they're going to try to trip you up. Uh, you, we've learned a lot of algorithms of, uh, involving fractions. We've learned adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. We need to keep all of these straight, and that's, that's kind of the trick here. Well, when we add, we have to find a common denominator. We don't just simply multiply numbers out necessarily. Uh, so, for example, some kids might want to do this, and I, I, it breaks my heart. I've seen some kids in my class do this uh, when they're tired, and uh, they'll just add the numerator plus the numerator, and that would be 5, and 5 plus 7 is 12, and then they look over to the choices, and they see, whoa, I've got uh, 5 twelfths, but that's not how it's done. So I have 2 thirds plus 3 sevenths. We need to find a common denominator. And, uh, excuse me, that's going to be, we're going to change that. It is two-fifths and three-sevenths. Uh, well, one way to find the common denominator is to multiply the two denominators. Uh, there's other ways. We could list the uh, factors or the multiples of seven. I could do seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, and look for the one that's divisible by 5, and that's simple enough, that's 35. We can also multiply the two denominators. So my denominator is 35, and uh, my kids have figured out cross multiplication. We have 7 times 2 is 14, so 2 fifths is 14 30 fifths. Again, if I multiply 5 times 7, I get 35, so I have to multiply the 2 times 7, I get 14. And 5 times 3 is 15. And again, I had to multiply my 7 times 5 to get 35, so I have to do the same to the numerator. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. Now I'll simply find the sum, and remember when we find the sum, we add the numerators, the denominators, stay the same. I get 29 35ths and there's my answer.